February. Taking advantage of the February thaw. Time to get yard drains in until the next freeze. We literally missed by one inch. Can you believe that? One inch. One inch made the difference between a hand dig and machine accessible. Man, this is so wet in here. It's so bad. The water sheds off a pool deck. So all the neighbor's water ends up right here. They've been trying to build this up, you could tell. Look at the fence. And then as you go down here, the fence gets taller. <laughs> all the water just comes off that pool deck during a hard rain. So basically they're getting all the downspout water on this side of the house as well. So think about that, non-permeable surface, concrete non-permeable surface asphalt shingles all that water ends up here now this homeowner has you know pets man they have a large dog and they're just fed up with it so hey senor salerno how are you good One thing about a hand dig, the sprinklers are easy to find. Looking good guys, looking good. Beautiful. So we'll take this bark and we'll rake it back and we'll, we'll move a few things. We'll even move over that rose bush. And when we're done, We'll put that bark back and it'll look like we were never even here. Now the dog did have this grass pretty tore up. So even though we were able to run the sod cutter in here, the, the sod wasn't much to begin with. So more than likely we're just going to end up seeding this when we get done, putting some straw down. See, this is all heavy traffic from... Look at the paws on that guy. So, no matter how much dirt they put here, they're not going to get rid of this problem. They have their own water coming off the patio. Downspout, downspout, downspout. So they got roof water, water coming off the patio. Water just sits here. You can keep putting dirt in here and you chase the water closer to the foundation of the house, that's no good. The reason why that looks like topsoil is because it is. When they tried to raise the backyard, they hauled in 30 yards of topsoil. It didn't dry up the yard. And it usually don't. You have to pipe it out. That's the only way. If you have water, if you have a low spot, 
If you have a collection area, run a French drain. The water tells you everything you need to know. Where the water is left to lie. If you got little potholes in your yard, don't fill them in. Now this had a swale that went down this way and then there's a swale in the back that went down that way. Because all this water came off this pool deck, they just kept raising this. Actually it just makes it worse. Now you're getting rid of the swale so you don't have the water in a high concentration in one area. Now you scattered it all over the yard. The yard just goes from bad to worse. There's only one way to dry up a yard. And you, if you're watching this video, it's because <laughs> you're looking to do just that. You want to drop your yard and you want to do it the right way the first time. Yeah. Beautiful. Nice trench, man. Nice deep trench. All right, so Marcelo finished coring the storm drain catch basin. This is a piece of schedule 44 inch with one of our PVC to corrugated pipe couplers. He's gonna put this through that wall. Let me show you. This one had like 10 inches, 10, 11 inches. So he's gonna put this, he's gonna put this in here and then he's gonna use hydraulic concrete to seal it around it because that's what the DPW wants us to do right here guys it's good stuff if you're a young contractor and you don't have a laser level and you're trying to get in the yard drainage business maybe you're a landscaper and you're building up materials, well, and equipment. All we have here is 10 pieces of plywood and two wheelbarrows and some hand shovels. This was not machine accessible or we'd have our track hoe back here, but I wanna make a point here because I started like this. I started with no laser level, no track hoe. I mean, I started out, believe it or not, with just an open trailer. <laughs> I don't want to date myself here, but I pulled it with a 77 Grand Prix. <laughs> and that's that's the truth, man. And yeah, it, it did take away all the conveniences. But to my point, if you want to just dig a trench and then flood it with water, it'll show you if you have any low spots that, that are going to hold water and if you got any high spots that you got to take down so that the water makes it to the storm drain you don't have water sitting in your trench now see what happens is if you leave water in this trench this big shrub they're thirsty in the summertime when they're foliated and they can sniff out water and they're going to fill your yard drain system with roots if you keep this trench smooth on the bottom and gradually sloped to the basin I promise you it's not going to fill full of roots because there's nothing there for them if you don't leave any water behind you don't leave anything for the shrubs in the trees You're a mad chemist. It's got to be just right. Perfect, huh?
And that's how you do a storm drain tap. People say, what is a tap? What, what are you calling a tap? We core it and we remove a core of concrete. And then we go ahead and hydraulic cement a tap in the storm drain catch basin so that we can connect the French drain pipe directly to that. Because you can't expect to just dead end your French drain and let the trench fill full of water and then cascade in to the storm drain. You want all the water to go through the sidewall of the storm drain catch basin. This way, it leaves no water in the trench. Leaves that bush a very unhappy shrub because it's not gonna mess with your French drain system. On this channel, we're all about showing you how to build French drains that last forever. <laughs> Wherever there's some mud, the dogs find it. You could really grit a whole backyard when you have a dog, but this is gonna take all the bulk water and it's gonna reduce the amount of soil saturation. Keep in mind a French drain, you can leach water to a French drain up to 20 feet. Now, I personally, for yard drains because people want you know instant now you know i i know that you see us do a lot of parallel where we have two french drains and if this isn't enough you know they could have us back and we add pipe to jobs all the time it's that's what's nice about this you can you can go ahead put in a drain and see see how much it improves the yard now you know there's a large dog here and when he runs i mean he just throws these divots there's nothing you're going to do about that. There's absolutely nothing you can do about that. I mean, I get jobs and I tell people, I'm going to improve your yard. I, contractors, be careful on what you say because they're going to hold you to every word. You know, here, dog was digging. So, to my point, this big guy's tearing this yard up regardless. There's just no getting around that. This is gonna help. This is gonna be definitely a site improvement to the homeowner. I just tell people, I guarantee that you're gonna see a difference. Is it gonna be enough for you? I don't know. Everybody has their own interpretation and opinion on how fast a drain works, how dry a yard is. Now, if I grid this and we run, say a line here, run another line here, and then we connect it, completely grid this yard I tighten I'll tighten this whole yard up I've done it so many times now these guys are fantastic Marcelo and his crew are just absolutely amazing I got to give a shout out to this crew because this crew is outstanding everybody on this crew has just stepped up in a big way we've been working all winter and I just can't thank them enough we've had a you know kind of mild weather and we're gonna jump on it I mean we're not gonna take you we don't like taking any more time off than we have to as contractors you know you save a, you save so much money you're saving money you're saving money for what winter when you're a contractor in the north because you know there's years where we freeze up the second week of november and we can't get back on a site to the last week of march first week of april so i mean you got to prepare for that in the event that does happen but to my point, contractors, let the homeowners know, say it right in your estimate, this is a yard improvement, it's a site improvement. 
Is it going to fix all the problems that that yard has? No, it's not a cure-all. However, all our clients that we put these drains in for are happy customers. Every one of them. So that's saying a lot. When you got thousands and thousands of systems in for more than three decades, and just through word of mouth, neighbors and friends and family members telling everybody about the transformation from a swampy yard to a yard that's usable, it's, it's more user friendly for the children and, and the pets as well. We like to make the most out of every trench that we put in. Because of the work that's involved, why not build that French drain so that that one trench draws in so much water that the capillary action is just off the charts. So we're gonna do a quad pack and we're not messing around. We're gonna use one inch to inch and a half cobble. Now the voids between this are just ridiculous. You wanna talk about moving water. This is gonna constantly pull water from the subsurface and our drains the way we build them with a burrito wrapped drainage fabric on top you can grow grass on them and they will take in all the surface water for every rain event as well as pull the subsurface water think about this it never takes a minute off 365 days 24 hours seven days a week i'm telling you these drains never take a minute off they never quit now we use brand new pieces of of um, plywood when we lay it on concrete the reason why i do that when this is in the backyards and they're dumping stone in the trenches stone get pushed into the plywood when the mini loader drives over it so if you go lay that on somebody's beautiful stamp concrete walk, you could drive that stone that's in that piece of plywood right into the finish. So we have brand new plywood here and we don't use it at all in the back, in the backyard on drains. We keep it just for this. Now I'm gonna show you one more thing. So we take our drainage fabric and we lay that down on the stamp concrete. Then put the new plywood over that. I'm telling you, you're not gonna get paid if you mess up somebody's concrete. Been there, done that. So you wanna take every precaution you possibly can so that when they show you a scuff mark, you're like, no way. That wasn't me. Matter of fact, I take pictures of anything wrong with concrete. If there's a crack, if it has surface pops, say somebody drug something on it and there's a big scratch, I always take pictures of it. Once I'm paid, you know, I might keep the pictures for a week. Then I just delete them. Moving right along. All right, so we got the back property line dug. All the sprinklers have been repaired. Really, there wasn't a lot to repair on this because of the hand digging. And Marcelo's getting all the drainage fabric in place. We're going to do a quad pack here, but there is a couple areas where it's shallow. So this dropped really hard in the corner. So we're going to have just two pipes to the storm drain go to four pipes then we get shallow on the property line so we'll go back to two and I will show you guys how to do that because everybody's always so worried about how to make those connections and it's really you know it's nothing I mean I don't want you guys overthinking this
In the comment sections on a lot of videos, people are asking about the connections for quad packs, tri packs, whatever it may be. So I want to show you guys. We use the Boffman Tile Company's end plug. It goes inside the high octane and it's barbed and it does not come out. So you don't have to struggle down here trying to connect these with a Y coupler. What's the point? Throwing water through this fence and water going through that pipe into the bottom one is the same thing. The water is going to pass right through it. There's so much inlet with the high octane that the water just passes right through it. There's more reservoir in the system with high octane than stone. So we got two pipes. Now the trench gets deeper over here. So we dropped in a third. Then we dropped in a fourth. Look at that, dropped in a fifth. This was super deep back here because they crowned the backyard. Now, crowning the backyard works if there's a storm drain on both sides of the yard. In this case, because it was crowned, the water couldn't, the surface water couldn't drain past this point. So now we have five five of the high octane in one trench okay so now because it was crowned and that was the deepest part of the dig we drop a line we go to four we drop another we go to three drop another with a Boffman Tile Company's end plug. And then we're gonna finish this out with two high octane. That orange spray paint, that's marking a sprinkler head. So we got five high octane pipes in here. See, these are veterans. They know how to minimize whatever has to be restored. There's another sprinkler right there. So again, we got high octane tied into a tapped storm drain catch basin. We run a second high octane and then we just start picking them up. Third, fourth, fifth, with the Boffman tile end plugs. This was an unbelievably big trench back here because of the crowning of the yard. There were too many people in this backyard trying to solve a water problem and they kept thinking throwing more fill at it was gonna be the answer instead of just piping it out in the first place. There's been a lot of dirt hauled into this yard so that just tells you how deep this trench is. There's five pipes in it. And we're still gonna have about, I don't know, looks about 12 inches of stone on top. But we have more reservoir, we have more void with the high octane. The Boffman tile high octane, it will move more water than stone. That's why we prefer to add pipe versus stone when we can. All right, Marcelo made a good point. There was a sprinkler head that was broken there. We didn't touch it, it was under the shrubs. But when they blew the sprinkler system out in the fall, the sprinkler was broke so it couldn't pop up and let the water out of the pipe. Then the pipe split. Now, contractors, this is, this is a message that I'm trying to get across. Whatever happens to that homeowner's yard, because you were in the back of that yard, you are gonna be to blame. Doesn't matter if they got a giant destructive dog. It doesn't matter if they got kids and their friends 
it doesn't matter if the lawn crew comes in in the spring before that sprinkler system is opened up and causes all that damage. Who are they going to call? They're going to call you. Why? Well, because you had equipment and men and you unearthed things and, oh, it has to be you. It has to be you. So anyways, we fix whatever we come across because it just isn't worth it. So just a message to the contractors out there. As if my life doesn't already have enough stress. All right, so this yard was crowded, and that's why water was stuck on the other side. Not to mention the sheer volume of water that they're seeing off the pool yard that's next door, and then their own concrete as well as their own rooftop. You know, we got five pipes right there. You can see they put this back together. The neighbor would never know. I'm sure the neighbor's just at work, but look at that. You guys just do great work, man. So this landscape bed, that was the last dam that was holding the water back from being able to run into the storm drain. We bettered that. We went down deep and went through the sidewall of that storm drain. This is going to drain this yard much better and we're gonna get all that subsurface water. So here, this trench has five pipes in it. We're using the inch and three quarter stone, that's what it is. It's, that's what they classify it as. The smallest stone in the pile is an inch. And yeah, I would say it's pretty close to an inch and three quarter. I mean, normally they have inch and a half, but whatever the vein in the, in the quarry, gives you so it's a little bit larger which is good I wanted to use a good coarse wash rock that moved a lot of water so we had five pipes in here and then we dropped as we started because again this yard was crowned so then we dropped a pipe here dropped another pipe there dropped the third there and then we're gonna keep the double pipe. Now towards the end of your trench, pay attention DIYers, because this is gonna help you out a lot. You can raise it slowly so that you're not digging as deep. It's probably about 10 inches over there. And then we just get deeper and deeper until we end up, I'm not really sure how deep we were, but probably a couple feet. One of the benefits to using a bigger stone, this is your cleanup. No pea stone in the grass. I love it. If we were using half inch or three quarter inch on this job, here's another one. No big deal. So much easier just to walk around and just pick up, you know, that large cobble. Don't have to worry about getting, you know, small stone in the lawnmower, weed whip, anything like that. It's so hard to get that smaller stone out of the grass. There's a lot of advantages to bigger, coarser rock. It has larger void, so it's going to move far more water. It goes further. So when you compare the tonnage cost, know this. This is going to do more linear feet of trench than the half inch will. It just has more void. That half inch, three quarter inch, it'll fill all the voids. You'll end up using more tonnage. So I like this because it moves more water. There's more void. It's easier cleanup. 
honestly the price is a wash now sometimes I need something uh, to compact a little bit better every situation is different this is a really bad water problem here so we're not messing around we got five high octane in the trench inch and three-quarter cobble <laughs> This system's gonna scream, man. This system's gonna rip. Top two on the bottom. There's going to be so much void in that drain. It's going to move so much water. That pool yard is responsible for so much water, just hundreds of gallons of water per rain event. Then you got the water coming off the rooftop of the same house. This is going to give the water a clear, easy path out of here. To ask water to find its way out of grass in here, that's asking a lot. For water to somehow make that 90 and down to the storm drain. A vein of stone moves water better than anything I know, as well as high octane. And that's what we brought to this job site. A lot of high octane. I think we use four coils. Four or five coils, actually. We got some of the Boffman internal couplers. Use those. Don't use the external. The external, they don't work very well at all. We like these internal couplers. They're barbed, and you cannot get that connection apart. And then the Boffman Tile Company's end plug clean easy it's also barbed this is not getting knocked off this is not coming out working our way out starting to pull up plywood So we throw grass seed down, and then we just lay straw over it. If you dormant plant in December, January in Michigan, you're going to get probably 50% of that grass seed to take. Now, if you dormant plant in February, and that's the month we're in, you're going to get higher, like 75% to take. So that's pretty good. I forgot to mention where I was at. I'm in beautiful Harrison Township, Michigan. This is a boating community, and it's part of my territory. So you can't even tell that we moved that bed over. 
yeah you can't even tell and it looks great so everything's now in reverse you know you pull up out of here get the equipment out lift the plywood start rolling the fabric it's just literally everything in reverse we'll take a hand tamper and we'll tamp out where the plywood kind of pushed in a little bit Trust me, one rain and it'll be like we were never even here. Alright guys, until the next video.